This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone. Good morning. So uh, we will wait for two more minutes for others to join. We'll wait for other learners to join and then we will start our discussion. Okay. So we'll wait for two more minutes. Thank you. Once again, uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Insight Learning Solutions. So I'll quickly open our course content. So what happened in yesterday's session? We were discussing about uh, the content that we are going to learn as part of this uh, course course journey. So now what we are going to do? We are going to start the first topic okay so so we are going to start the day one topic so uh, first of all we are going to discuss performance engineering introduction part performance engineering introduction part okay so introduction to performance engineering introduction to performance engineering first of all that understanding we should have what is performance engineering what is performance engineering Okay. So I would say we are trying to fine tune the application problem. Okay. You are trying to fine tune the application problem. I mean, you are trying to engineer the problem. You are going to engineer the problem. I mean, you are trying to resolve the problem. Okay. So performance testing will only give the numbers. Okay, performance testing in that what we are pretty much doing, we are only measuring the numbers and we are sharing the numbers. Mostly that is what is actually happening. Okay, what is actually happening? Measuring your number and then sharing the number. That is what you are pretty much doing in the performance testing, let's say. Okay, but in performance engineering not only numbers you should provide the reason for numbers you should provide the reason for numbers okay what is that say an example if you are i mean in your performance testing report there is one particular transaction name called uh, search transaction search transaction say like that search transaction is actually taking 15 seconds i mean your report is actually saying search transaction is actually taking 15 seconds so your performance testing tool will only give you the number 15 seconds number that's all but your performance engineering should say where is that 15 second is actually spent how to resolve the problem what are all the recommendation how to find tune it all those things are we are going to discuss under performance engineering performance engineering you are trying to 
fine tuned the application performance and you are also providing the reason for the the increase in uh, performance okay so so what is the understanding performance testing is only going to give you the number performance engineering will give you the reason for the number the reason for the number where it is actually spent okay which layer is it actually a web server level is it actually a app server level is it actually a db server level all those things we are going to discuss okay so maybe somebody will ask me the question sir what is web server what is app server what is db server okay so can anybody say what is web server app server db server already anybody aware of that Oh uh, yes. Uh, web server is a front end. Uh, front end. Uh, it uh, it mainly on web pages and app server deals with the business logic, and DB server will store the data and it will fetch from. If a request is raised from the web server, it will go to the business logic and app server, and if any data is there, it will go to DB server and it fetch the data and get back to the app app server. And from there too, it will be visible in web server. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, correct. So mostly, I mean, your web server deals with static contents. Okay, web server deals with static contents. Whatever the the files that are there in your page, right? All the static contents that are stored in the web server. It may be your your uh, all the static contents that are loaded, right? That is actually your web server. App server, yes. the business logic in which the functionality is actually working right so business logic that are stored under app server that is actually called as application server and then the data required for all these activities the data okay the data required for all these activities are stored under db server database server database server so any activity that we are doing okay say a small functionality that we are doing in the application so it has to go via all these server right web server app server db server like that the request is actually traveling so while getting the response it, it means that which layer you are spending more time is it on the static content level is it on the app logic level or is it on the data that are provided so okay. so which means that that understanding also important right because your entire response time which layer okay say like the same 15 seconds example right 15 seconds taken for search transaction say like uh, you think like uh, some 4 second is actually taken by your uh, uh, web server your 6 seconds is taken in the app server and then 5 seconds taken in the db server like that you should have the clarity then only you can further do the investigation saying like which layer we can optimize it so that your total response time will come down so that is how engineering activities that are comes into the picture engineering activity the top comes into the picture okay because everybody i mean uh, in industry that uh, that false assumption is there i mean uh, uh, engineering means what or in in there are organization even performance tester role is actually mentioned as performance engineers there are organization the the job role is actually mentioned like that so so we don't want to go into that confusion performance engineering is something that you are trying to fine tune the application performance okay it may be any layer it may be client side it may be app side it may be db side it may be infra side any layer but the intention is very simple you are trying to fine tune the application performance I'll take a pass here. Any question? Please tell them. Anybody have any question? Yeah. So now we have the understanding. Performance engineering means what? Performance engineering means what? 
so how come this is actually happening in the industry right now so if you take an example say like we are working in agile model we all are working in agile model so what is actually happening in agile model we are only getting very limited days for doing all the activity say like uh, three weeks time period or four weeks time period in which we have to deliver the project okay so because of that what is actually happening the developers are not finding sufficient time the developers are not finding sufficient time to do everything i mean everything in a sense like detailed unit testing or other type of uh, activities developers are unable to perform the code review code walk through all those things are right now it is not clearly or in a detailed way it is not happening because of the timeline pressure because of the timeline pressure which is not completely happening in a mature organization what they are doing in a mature organization maybe a, a product based company with uh, five to ten years of experience in that mature organization what they are doing they are having a mechanism called code walk through or code review okay code walk through or code review so what they are doing say like uh, the junior person in the team the junior person in the team when they are writing the uh, program uh, at the end of the day the senior person in the team they are reviewing the code and then they are doing the check in check out process okay that the senior person will review the code in the evening and then the check in check out process is actually happening in those organization where you have a mature uh, process in place mature process in place okay but in certain organization that process is not there because of that the quality of uh, software is not good okay quality of application is not good because you don't have the proper process i mean the code review code walk through process and all they don't have it okay because because uh, the timeline pressure is there they are uh, going on with a certain timeline and uh, in order to meet the timeline they are missing certain things that is what is actually happening even there are multiple clients to whom i worked with there are clients yes they are having the process there are clients yes they don't uh, they don't have the process so so which means that in in that situation your your activity i mean the fine tuning activity instead of developer performance engineers are actually participating and they are trying to fine tune the application performance okay actually it is supposed to be done by the developers or the architects but mostly what is actually happening performance engineers are actually doing this activity because developers they don't have the time to to resolve those things okay they have they have the milestone issue or timeline issue delivery issue deadline issue all those things are they are discussing because of that they are not for uh, they are not following on, on the uh, activity this kind of activity but for performance engineers uh, uh, for them it is actually day to day activity for performance engineers their day to day activity is fine tuning the application performance uh, aggregating the information across the layer and then they are trying to resolve the problem then and there they wanted to maintain the standard of application in in a way that it is actually good with the performance so that's how performance engineers are actually working on okay so this is how performance engineering is actually happening because right now there are problems there are timeline problems there are uh, 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 places they don't have clarity so because of that performance engineers they are coming to the picture and they are trying to resolve the problem I'll take a pass here. Any question? Can still know. <clears throat> yeah. So the next topic: performance engineering life cycle. Life cycle. so as i told you guys like i told you before also uh, performance engineering life cycle means what say any activity we are following life cycle you all know you guys already aware of uh, those things right like when developers are doing development level activity they are following sdlc software software development life cycle 
and then uh, when uh, software testers are actually doing the activity they are following the life cycle stlc software testing life cycle and then when performance testers are participating in this activity they are following performance testing life cycle now we are learning performance engineering so that's the reason we are learning pelc which is which is actually called as performance engineering life cycle so we are going to learn about each and every layer what activities that we are actually focusing on the performance engineering life cycle so plc so what i am trying to do here i am trying to uh, provide you guys like comparative understanding i mean instead of only saying plc what i am trying to do right now i am trying to uh, compare sdlc activities along with that plc activities okay when developers are doing certain activity along with that what performance engineers are actually doing that understanding we are going to discuss right now okay so requirement gathering that is actually the first step any of the activity first step is actually what requirement gathering when developers are actually gathering the requirement what performance engineers are actually going to do performance engineers are actually going to do the analysis of the requirement and they are also thinking about system sizing how to size your system Okay, create your capacity okay so so which means that requirement gathering phase is nothing but you are trying to analyze your requirement and also your system sizing related information you are going to this system sizing related information you are going to discuss so what are all the things that we are doing as a performance engineer what are all the things that you are doing during this uh, phase during this requirement gathering phase what are all the things done by the performance engineers first one is right number of resources to provide satisfactory performance right number of resources to provide the satisfactory performance okay what is your system what resources that you are going to use what is your resource configuration when you are following so and so resource utilization how much of a benefit that you are going to get it so right number of resources to provide satisfactory performance okay that is a important point and then growth rate growth rate means what this year we are so and so next year we are so and so in next three year we are going to be so and so concurrent user like that you are going to understand it means that is actually growth rate <clears throat> and then storage requirement storage this year i'm storing 100 gb data means next year i'm storing 500 gb data means so i am i have to think about the user that are dealing with and the storage that we are actually doing so that storage requirement also we have to discuss during the requirement gathering phase during the requirement gathering phase we have to understand this similarly end user response time what is your end user response time mean end user is actually accessing going to access your application means how your end user response time should be that also we are going to discuss and then number of concurrent users okay how many user you are going to use it in your application and that is actually going to simulate your production volume simulate your production volume number of concurrent users and then peak transaction peak peak transaction anybody can give me the definition for peak transaction uh, say for example on specific days uh, like uh, christmas or like uh, some festival days maximum number of transactions can happen yeah yeah me so correct so in a week say an example in a week Uh, you guys are getting uh, Monday high, high volume or Friday high volume. 
okay, Monday high volume or Friday high volume. That that days you are going to consider as a peak transaction. Okay, so you are you are. I mean, I mean the application is there in the brand new state means you have to assume it. If it is already there in the production means you can do the log analysis. Okay, you can do the log analysis. If the application is already there in the production, but if the application is there in the early development stage, you need to do assumption. You need to do assumption. Okay, so that is what we are trying to do it in the P. I mean requirement gathering phase. Okay, when the developer is doing the requirement gathering phase, you are doing the analysis of the requirement and also you are trying to do the system sizing related information. I'll take a pass here. Any question, guys? Still no. So the first phase is actually requirement gathering. Along with that, we are trying to analyze your requirement and then system saving related things we are, we are uh, uh, checking in. So next activity done by the developer is actually your architecture understanding. Architecture understanding. Yes, even performance engineers should also do this activity. Architecture review. Architecture review. I mean, when you are observing your organization application architecture, you should easily understand it. It should be clean and clear. User friendly architecture should be there. So, first point is simple design and implementation. Simple design and implementation. Okay. So, meaning that everybody should understand. System A talks to system B, system B talks to system C, why it is actually doing this, all things would be clearly, you have to understand, you have to understand very clearly this, this flow of your architecture, the flow of your architecture. Choose right algorithm and data structure. Yes, for any, any uh, architecture, you should know the algorithm, what algorithm you are following and then what data structure we are going to use and then architecture limitation that is also very very important architecture limitation so limitation means what say any architecture will have a limitation any architecture will have a limitation you have to document it because in future nobody should come and ask you like why this happened why that happened like that they should not ask you because what you did you know the limitation of your architecture and you already documented if someone is actually coming and asking you you can explain them but this is already taken care this is actually a known uh, limitation only like that you can explain to them because every architecture will have certain limitation take an example uh, we are constructing one building we are constructing one building and uh, we are we are uh, we are uh, doing that uh, basement basement level activity <clears throat> so i did the construction of uh, i mean i i put the uh, materials and uh, uh, raw materials and stuffs for constructing uh, five floors <clears throat> I'm, I'm, i i did the initial uh, things for, for to construct a five floors but after putting the basement I am planning to do construction of 10 floors. Is it fair? Is it correct? Is it correct to change the plan post implementation of your uh, basement activity? Which is not correct, right? Because your, your initial plan is for five floors means the basement is actually strong enough to maintain the five floors only. If you are trying to increase the load in the, in the, in the later part of the stage, that is not fair idea. So similarly, your architecture. Similarly, your architecture. What you are going to do it in your architecture? You have to think about your future. Provide provision for all the future plans also. 
say like uh, in future i'm going to have the integration with some other application in future i'm going to expand my application in future i'm going to implement a lot of new new things in my application like that there are things are there means you should definitely have the provision in the early stage itself if not in the later part of the application that kind of a modification is not that easy not that easy you cannot simply change it uh, as and when you require right because it is a it is an architect architecture should be maintained in a way that it is it is actually uh, you are not going to frequently do all changes or you cannot uh, jump between two to three designs if you are trying to do that the cost of doing that will be very very high which means that you have to spend a lot of money for all the way changing the architecture then and there okay that is not actually the good idea so so that is the reason i told you you should know the limitation of your architecture also you should know the limitation of your architecture i mean this is what is actually possible this is not at all possible in future this is what my plan i have the provision in my architecture so that i can plug and play that architectural level so that i am not going to do much of rework much of rework okay that is called as architectural review i'll take a pass here any question this so i mean um see th this thing is actually happening i mean uh, the architectural related things when you are talking about you know that in system level things are mostly we are dealing okay so that time only people are uh, talking this uh, fancy terms like uh, scale up and then scale out scale up and scale out so what is the scale up so this may be a interview question also okay so in, during interviews uh, people are trying to understand how far you are good with uh, the terms and terminologies so so please understand this scale up means what scale out means what okay say an example uh, uh, i have a machine i have a machine with 8 gb ram have a machine with 8 gb ram so my end users are complaining that there is a problem instead of going to the straight away going to the source code level i mean instead of touching the source code what i am trying to do i am trying to find the alternate ways is there any any option that are available so that i can i can reduce that uh, the the problem i can reduce the end user reported problem right how can i do that i'm trying to do some kind of a infrastructure level change low hanging fruits low hanging fruits okay i'm trying to do something on the infrastructure level say like the 8 gb ram i'm increasing to 16 gb the 8 gb ram i'm increasing to 16 gb okay so while doing that you are feeling some something is actually improved okay it is not perfectly improved but something is actually improved and we are feeling somewhere there is an improvement like that you are understanding okay so what you are trying to do okay gb to 16 gb i increased i am getting a little improvement and the way things are actually happening means what will i do i'll increase that to 32 gb is that to 32 gb so 32 gb yes even after increasing i'm getting little more improvement not complete improvement so so like this if you are keep on increasing like this if you are keep on increasing this is actually called as what scale up scale up scale up 
This is also called as what? Vertical scaling. This is also called as vertical scaling. So after some point of time, I mean, you are keep on increasing the RAM size and all. After some point of time, you cannot do it. Because, because to a certain extent only, to a certain extent only, you can improve or increase your process because your chipset will not support, your motherboard will not support if you keep on increasing your RAM size. To a certain extent only, you can increase your RAM size and all. Okay. So in this case, what you can do? I increased the configuration. I got certain improvement, but I did not get the complete improvement. So what I can do, I have other plans as well. Horizontal scaling. What is that horizontal scaling? You put the one more machine with the similar configuration. Say like 32 GB machine. 32 GB machine. One more machine you are configuring and put these two machines under load balancer, LB. These two machines under load balancer. Okay, so you are trying to create a similar copy of the machine and you are trying to put it under load balancer. Okay, load balancer. That is actually called as what? Scale out. It's actually called as scale out. Otherwise called as horizontal scaling. Otherwise called as horizontal scaling. So, so vertical scaling, horizontal scaling. Okay, you are in, you are keep on increasing the configuration in the single machine itself. That is actually called a scale up. You are creating the similar copy of the machine and then trying to do it. That, that is called as horizontal scaling. That is called as horizontal scaling. I'll take a pass here. Any question you still know? Anybody have any questions? <laughs> So these are something that people are, I mean, discussing these fancy terms because instead of uh, straight away going and touching. Yes, uh, yes sir, uh, if the client is not ready to scale up or scale down, if, if the client is want whatever the environment is there within that only I want uh, results. In such case, uh, what we can do? If he's not ready to upgrade. In such case, you need to go and do the source code correction only. Source code correction. Oh. Oh, okay. so actually, that is more costly when compared to increasing the infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Because rewriting the code and all, it's not that easy. It requires a lot of effort, right? So, so because of that, really, uh, people will think about this kind of a workaround option. And if they are oh. not doing, then straight away they have to touch the phone. Okay. 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 So actually, customer know these things. Uh, I mean, already because uh, touching the code is not that easy. It will break certain functionality, or it requires a lot of uh, human effort to do the development, to do the testing, to do the performance testing. A lot of things are actually required. Okay. Okay. So, so that is the reason um, um, somebody is asking about architecture or, or, or your, your flows and all. People have started talking about these fancy terms. So that is the reason I wanted to discuss. Uh, um, I mean, uh, scale up means what, vertical scaling means what, horizontal scaling means. That too, 
that to this cloud infrastructure people are using cloud infrastructure means these words are very very common okay at least uh, on premises very less utilized word but for cloud infrastructure almost everybody will talk about scalability elasticity these are the words uh, we usually use it so so that's the reason i i explained uh, this as well okay so which means that so that that architectural review uh, cycle what you are going to do you are going to make your system simple and easy to implement it and you are aware of what you are actually going to use it in the algorithm and then you should know that limitation of your architecture so that in future you are not going to create any problem okay that is what the main objective of doing the architectural review architectural review So those who wanted to enroll yourself for this uh, course journey, okay, this is Kumar sir number. Okay, I'll I'll copy paste in the chat also. Okay, this is Kumar sir number eight zero one double nine five two four two seven. Okay, eight zero one double nine five two four two seven. Okay, Kumar sir number. So uh, you can reach out to Kumar sir for. any further information related to course content course timing and then your fees related information okay so course content i'll paste it in the chat you guys can take it this is the course content okay and then course timing is actually this time slot 7:30 am 7:30 am to 8:30 am indian time okay 7:30 am to 8:30 am indian time And the corresponding times. Okay, this is the corresponding time, 7:30 a.m. to 8:30 a.m. IST, and then the corresponding U.S. U.K. Uh, timings are there. Okay, so so which means that uh, 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 every day one one hour, every day one one hour, and we are going to complete this uh, learning by 25 hours. 25 hours. Okay, we are going to learn by 25 hours. and uh, uh, all these uh, sessions okay right now uh, we are taking this uh, sessions right all these sessions are recorded okay and post completion of the session our team will share the recorded session through youtube playlist url through youtube playlist url in the same playlist url daily they will attach 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 the video so which means that you are not missing anything and if you are going out somewhere and you have certain personal things you are missing the session means yes your recorded sessions are there you can go through that and then bring it on your group yeah that uh, 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 that video you are going to have it for lifetime access okay lifetime access you are going to have it for lifetime access that video is entirely for your uh, learning purpose okay and then all artifacts artifacts softwares supporting documents all those things we are going to get, share it through google drive okay google drive through which we will share all the artifacts relevant documents and everything so you can uh, download it okay you can download it configure it and then you can learn it okay so which means that this is actually a practical oriented learning all those things are practical oriented learning and then we are going to do a hands on experience and then we are going to learn this okay so industry level best practices industry level standards everything we are going to discuss so so uh, uh, so all the artifacts that are shared by shared through uh, uh, google drive as well okay so uh, this is actually a week day session monday to friday monday to friday week day session 7:30 am to 8:30 am weekend holiday weekend holiday so so please plan yourself so those who wanted to enroll for this course journey uh, you can reach out to kumar sir 8019952427 okay i'll repeat the number 8019952427 okay, 8019952427 this is kumar sir number 
so you can discuss with him for any further um, um, information any further information you can discuss with him so pretty much we already started guys okay for everybody's information we already started the uh, day one uh, topic but today also there are uh, uh, there are uh, 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 learners joined for doing the evaluation of the course okay for the learners who joined today uh, please enroll yourself for the continuous learning okay so you don't want to miss anything you don't want to miss any critical topics that we are discussing in the session so please enroll yourself for uh, the continuation okay any anything you don't want to miss it please uh, 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 do the enrollments please reach out to kumar for any further information so for the learners who joined today for evaluating us thank you so much for joining today and then uh, uh, gave me the opportunity to share my knowledge and experience with you people so i am expecting the same we are going to have the continuous learning in this uh, course journey thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye